പ്രൈസ് ഗോഡ് എത്ര പേര് സന്തോഷമായിരിക്കുന്നു കാരണം ഏകദേശം കുറച്ച് സമയം മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പിൽ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്ന് നമ്മുടെ വിട്ടുപോകാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞ ഒരു വർഷം കഴിഞ്ഞ വർഷങ്ങളൊക്കെ കർത്താവ് എത്ര ഭംഗിയായിട്ടാണ് നമ്മളെ കാത്തെ കാല് കല്ലിൽ തട്ടിപ്പോകാതെ വീണു പോകാതെ ഈ ഒരു സെക്കൻഡ് വരെ ഏതൊക്കെയോ ദേശത്ത് ഏതൊക്കെയോ സ്ഥലത്തായിരുന്നു നമ്മളെ കർത്താവ് ഇത്രത്തോളം എത്തിച്ച് ഈ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരു രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി നാലിൻ്റെ ആദ്യം കാണാൻ കർത്താവ് കൃപ ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് എന്ത് യോഗ്യതയാണ് പറയാനുള്ളത് എല്ലാവർക്കും കർത്താവിനോട് നന്ദി പറയാം ഇന്ന് ജീവനോടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അത് കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ഒരു പദ്ധതി കൊണ്ട് മാത്രമാണ് കൊറോണ വന്നു ഒരുപാട് പേര് ഈ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്നിൻ്റെ തുടക്കം കണ്ട ഒത്തിരി പേര് അവസാനം കാണാനില്ല പക്ഷെ ഒരു യോഗ്യതയും ഇല്ലാത്ത നമ്മളെ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി നാല് കാണാൻ കർത്താവ് കൃപ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒരു അസുഖത്തിനും ഒരു രോഗത്തിനും ഒരു കൊറോണയ്ക്കും വിട്ടുകൊടുക്കാതെ നിന്നെ പിടിച്ചു നിർത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അവന് നിന്നിൽ ഒരു പദ്ധതിയുണ്ട് ഏമേ നമുക്ക് കണ്ണടക്കാം പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാം കർത്താവേ യശപ്പച്ച നന്ദിയപ്പ നന്ദി അല്ലാതെ ഒന്നും പറയാനില്ല കർത്താവെ കഴിഞ്ഞ വർഷങ്ങൾ കർത്താവ് ഈ ഒരു സെക്കൻഡ് വരെ കർത്താവ് രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തി മൂന്ന് തുടങ്ങി ഈ ഒരു സെക്കൻഡ് വരെ കർത്താവെ ഒരു യോഗ്യതയും ഇല്ലെങ്കിലും കർത്താവെ ജീവനോടെ ഞങ്ങൾ നിർത്തിയല്ലോ കർത്താവെ ഈ ദേശത്ത് കർത്താവ് ഈ ദേശം കാണുവാൻ കർത്താവ് ഈ ദേശത്ത് കർത്താവ് എത്ര പേർ പട്ടുപോയപ്പോഴും കർത്താവെ ഒന്നും പറയാനില്ലാത്ത ഞങ്ങളെ കർത്താവെ ഈ ദേശത്ത് നിലനിർത്തിയല്ലോ അപ്പ അങ്ങനെ ഓർത്ത് സ്തുതിക്കുന്നപ്പ നന്ദി പറയുന്നു കർത്താവെ യശോപ്പച്ച ഈ ദേശത്ത് കർത്താവെ ഈ ഒരു സമയം കർത്താവ് എത്ര പേർ സമാധാനമില്ലാതെ സന്തോഷമില്ലാതെ ഓടുമ്പോൾ കർത്താവ് എത്ര പേർ ആശുപത്രികളിലായിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ കർത്താവ് എത്ര പേർ ജയിലിലായിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ കർത്താവ് എത്ര പേർ കർത്താവെ സർജറിക്ക് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് കർത്താവ് ഓപ്പറേഷൻ തിയേറ്ററുകളിലായിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഒന്നും കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളെ തട്ടാതെ കർത്താവ് ഇത്രത്തോളം നടത്തിയല്ലോ അപ്പ അതിക്ക് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു കർത്താവെ യശോപ്പച്ച കഴിഞ്ഞ ഒരു വർഷകാലം ഞങ്ങൾ വാഹനങ്ങൾ ഓടിച്ചപ്പോൾ അപ്പ ഞങ്ങൾ യാത്രകൾ ചെയ്തപ്പോൾ കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങൾ ഞങ്ങളെയും ഞങ്ങളുടെ കുടുംബത്തെയും കർത്താവെ കാത്തുപരിപാലിച്ച കൃപയെ ഓർത്ത് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു കർത്താവെ എല്ലാവരും നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞു കർത്താവിനോട് നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞ് കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസങ്ങളിലൊക്കെ എത്രയോ പേർ ഈ ലോകത്തിൽ നിന്ന് മാറ്റപ്പെട്ടപ്പോഴും എത്രയൊക്കെ അനർത്ഥ സംഭവങ്ങൾ സംഭവിച്ചപ്പോഴും നമ്മളെ കർത്താവ് ഒരു പോറൽ പോലും ഏൽപ്പിക്കാതെ നമ്മളെ നമ്മൾ കുടുംബത്തെയും കാത്തില്ലേ കർത്താവിനോട് നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞ് കടന്ന് കഴിഞ്ഞ ദിവസങ്ങൾ സംഭവിച്ച ദുഃഖങ്ങളിലൊക്കെ കർത്താവ് നിങ്ങളുടെ കൂടെ നിന്നില്ലേ കർത്താവിനോട് നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞേ ഈ വലിയൊരു പട്ടണത്തിനകത്ത് ഈ ഒരു കൂട്ടമായി ഇവിടെ ഇരുന്ന് കർത്താവിനെ ആരാധിക്കാൻ കർത്താവ് വലിയൊരു ഭാഗ്യം തന്നില്ലേ കർത്താവിനോട് നന്ദി പറഞ്ഞേ നന്ദിയപ്പ യശോപ്പച്ച ഈ ഒരു ദേശത്ത് കർത്താവെ ഈ ഒരു സഭയെ അപ്പൻ പണിതതിനായി നന്ദിയപ്പ ഇത്രത്തോളം ഇതിനെ നിലനിർത്തിയതിനായി നന്ദിയപ്പ കർത്താവെ അങ്ങ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ കൂടെ ഇന്ന് ഇറങ്ങി വരണോ അപ്പ കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളായിരിക്കുന്ന സ്ഥലത്ത് കർത്താവെ അങ്ങയുടെ കൃപ കർത്താവ് അങ്ങ് അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഇവിടെ ചലിക്കുന്നതിനെ നന്ദിയപ്പ ഞങ്ങൾക്കിടയിലേക്ക് അങ്ങ് ഇറങ്ങി വന്നതിനായി നന്ദിയപ്പ കർത്താവെ ഇവിടെ വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന ഓരാൾ പോലും കർത്താവെ ഇന്നത്തെ ശുശ്രൂഷയിൽ അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യം അറിയാതെ തിരിച്ചു പോകരുത് കർത്താവെ അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഇവിടെ ഇറങ്ങി നിൽക്കുന്ന നന്ദി കർത്താവെ അങ്ങ് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഇവിടെ വന്നതിനായി നന്ദിയപ്പ കർത്താവെ ഇന്നത്തെ മീറ്റിംഗ് ഏൽപ്പിച്ച് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഈ വർഷം കർത്താവെ തീരുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് കർത്താവെ യേശുപ്പച്ച ഞങ്ങളിവിടെ ആക്കി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന കൃപയെ ഓർത്ത് നന്ദി പറയുന്നപ്പ കർത്താവെ ഇവിടുത്തെ വർഷിപ്പ് ടീം കർത്താവെ വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന ആരാധനയ്ക്ക് വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന ഓരോരുത്തരെയും കർത്താവ് യാത്രകളിലായിരിക്കുന്ന ഓരോരുത്തരെയും ഏൽപ്പിച്ച് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നപ്പ അങ്ങയുടെ കരം കൂടെ ഇരിക്കട്ടപ്പ ദൂതന്മാരെ കൂടെ അയക്കണപ്പ അപ്പം അവരെ കരം പിടിച്ച് കർത്താവെ നടത്തണേ കർത്താവെ യേശുപ്പച്ച ഈ ദേശത്തിൽ കർത്താവെ നമ്മൾ ഈ ആയിരിക്കുന്ന സമയത്തും കർത്താവെ സമാധാനമില്ലാതെ ഓടുന്ന ഓരോ ജനത്തെ ഓർത്ത് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ അങ്ങ് അവർക്ക് സമാധാനമായി കൂട്ടായി തീരുന്നതിനെ നന്ദിയപ്പ യേശുപ്പച്ച ഒരു തവണ കൂടെ ഞങ്ങൾ നന്ദി പറയുന്നപ്പ ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാം മേൽപ്പൻ്റെ പാതപിടത്തിൽ ഏൽപ്പിച്ച് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവെ ദേവദാസിനെ ഇന്ന്
ഈ സഭയിലായിരിക്കുന്ന കർത്താവ് കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ദാസിന് വേണ്ടി പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കുടുംബത്തിന് വേണ്ടി പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവെ ഇവിടെ നിർത്തിയ കൃപയ്ക്കായി നന്ദിയപ്പ ഇത്രത്തോളം കർത്താവ് നിന്നല്ല കർത്താവ് ഇത്രയും പേർക്ക് ആശ്വാസമായി കർത്താവ് ഇത്രയും പേർക്ക് ആശ്വാസമായി ഓടിയാണ് ഞാനൊരു കൂടാരം കർത്താവെ ഈ പട്ടണത്തിൽ കർത്താവ് ഏൽപ്പിച്ചല്ലോ കർത്താവെ ഓർത്ത് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു കർത്താവെ യേശപ്പച്ചോ തെറ്റിപ്പോകാതെ വീണു പോകാതെ കർത്താവിന് വേണ്ടി നിൽക്കുവാനുള്ള കൃപ കൊടുത്തതിനായി നന്ദിയപ്പ ആ കുടുംബത്തെ ബ്ലസ് ചെയ്ത് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവെ കർത്താവെ വർഷിപ്പ് ടീം ഓരോരുത്തരും ഏൽപ്പിച്ച് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നപ്പ അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിൽ ഞങ്ങൾ വെൽക്കം ചെയ്യുന്നു അങ്ങനെ കരം കരം കൂടെ ഇരിക്കട്ടെ കർത്താവ് ഒരു തവണ കൂടെ നന്ദി പറയുന്നപ്പ ബലപ്പെടുത്തണം ശക്തീകരിക്കണം അങ്ങയുടെ സാന്നിധ്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടി ഞങ്ങൾ യാചിക്കുന്നപ്പ യേശുവിൻ്റെ നാമത്തിൽ തന്നെ ആമേൻ connected he see it already we believe that two or three gather in his name his presence would be in the midst and we know that he's already here and i can feel that in my body you have got the freedom to worship the living god use your body is the best weapon ever or the instrument ever to worship the living god If you want to move around, dance, sing, this is your time. Before 2023 finishes, this is your time to enjoy in Christ. Let us sing and dance and worship the living God.
says, Hallelujah, be joyful in the presence of the Lord. How many of us are still happy? Yes, Hallelujah. Those who are happy, join us along with us, sing and dance. There's nothing, don't have to look at your neighbor. Whether they're dancing or singing, this is your time with your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Enjoy that time.
who can do the miracles and wonders in your life. We had lots of testimonies today. Just have a reminder for you. Think about what he can do in your life. If you haven't accepted him so far, this is your time. Rethink it, that he's a good God. He's a savior, he's a healer, he's a deliverer.
we come with a grateful and a thankful heart to worship you. You deserve all glory, all honor, and all praise. For there is no one like you, great Jehovah, you are. Reveal your glory in this place. This is what the Lord would say to this house. I'm doing a new thing. This journey is not an easy journey, but as you carry on, you will see the power of the Lord. And the Lord wants you to know it is not about numbers, it's about the presence. And that's what He seeks people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. There are people in this house, the Lord says, who are committed, but He's calling the others. Forgetting everything aside and leaving it aside, coming into the presence of the Lord and allowing Him to do the work in you. In simple words, jumping into the river of God and swimming in it. But God is about to do something great. I see the month of June written. I see the Lord about to do great and mighty things in this house. But the Lord is asking for people of faith to rise up in the strength of the Lord in the midst of adversaries and challenges and everything and say God you are God and my faith shall not be shaken and I declare over every circumstance peace of God there's some families that have issues but the Lord says trust me and believe me in this coming year you will see my glory in a greater measure Till now what you have seen, get ready to experience something mighty, what is prepared for you. I just want you to open up your mouth and just pray in tongues for some time. Come on, saints, come on. Come on, just pray, just pray, just pray. It's not that the preacher's voice needs to be loud. Come on, lift up your voice before the Lord. Come on, pray. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to do the mighty work that He has to do in you. There are some of you in this house, the way you expected things to happen didn't happen this year. But the Lord says, Trust me, trust me, put your faith in me. And watch and see what I do for you. Before the month of March will end, some of you will experience miracles in your life. Some of you will see the glory and the power of the Lord before March will finish. For God's glory shall be revealed in your life. You may not be expecting it, you'll be just moving around. But the Lord will show His glory in your life. So get ready, get ready, get ready to experience the power of the Lord. Father, we want to thank you. We love you. We worship you. We bless your name because it all belongs to you and to nobody else. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord.
You may be seated. As we approach 2024, I don't know what you're expecting, Pastor Manoj. Thank you. When you invited me, I know he had been forcing me to come. You know? And I just kept on saying no to him. But the Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the, violent, uh, the uh, kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent taketh it by force. You tell Pastor Manoj something, and he tells you he does not expect a no from you. He wants to see a miracle. Amen. He wants to see results. So we talked in July, and we fixed up that I'll be here. This morning I was with my church. I have to go back for tomorrow. I have another service. So keep me in prayers. But when pastor asked me for a word, I prayed. In the month of July, the Lord said to me, open doors for the righteous saints. Open doors for the righteous saints. I did not know you were so excited. Only one person clapped or one person said amen. You know? I, I, I don't know about you. If you see open doors in your life, how many will be excited? If you're looking for a job and a door opens, if you're looking for a car and a car comes to you, if you're looking for a house and a house comes to you, I don't know how many of you go, oh, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. How many of you will do that? You got to be excited when God is about to open up doors for you. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, give me the scriptures. And in the month of July, August, I started to meditate and started to send the scriptures in August to pastor. And the Lord said to me from the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, but I'm going to start from verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia. I don't know how many of you know the word Philadelphia. I'm not talking about the town in America. Some of you thought, oh, the angel went to America near New York, to Philadelphia. No, it's one of the churches in the seven churches. Now, some of you may be wondering my background. I am from Punjab. I grew up most of my life there. I was a businessman until the Lord brought me into the ministry 25 years ago. I've been serving the Lord 25 years. And I, God has brought a lot of people in my life, but God has opened up some unusual doors in my life. And the doors, I don't know how many of you know about Elijah and Elisha, not the one who studied with you in school, the Elijah or the Elisha, not that one, but that in the Bible. Elisha saw a door open through Elijah and he could do double portion. God wants to open up doors. Pastor, thank you to you and your family and your church for allowing us to be here and speak and declare prophetically the word of the Lord. To the church in Philadelphia, church of love, city of brotherly love. So God wants to speak to this church to be a church of love. See, 2023 is going to finish, so we need to leave a lot of things behind. Our culture, uh oh I have my car ready, and I'm gone after this. But I'll tell you the truth. Some of us hold on to our culture and our things, and God cannot do great things through us because we are holding on to something else. Let's hold on to the love of God. Faith hope and love and the greatest is now do you love everybody everybody is not the same here how many of you know that just look around we are different colors different countries but do we love everybody that's the question you may have to eat yam yeah Jalef rice, you different kinds of rice. We had today different kinds of rice. Anybody from Uganda? No. You need people from Uganda. Man, they can make chapatis. 
they make the best chapatis I have tasted. I'm an Indian, I'm a Punjabi. Man, you can't beat a Punjabi parotta. But those women can cook. Thank God for Uganda. I love them in our church. Church in Philadelphia. These are the words of him who, who is holy and true. Watch carefully now. Who holds the key of David. When he opens, no one can shut. And where he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed, see, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I have placed before you after church. I know I go to weddings, I do a lot of weddings, and I realize preaching in wedding is not worth it. Now, nah, it's not worth it. Because all the guests who came to the wedding, they all came for eating. So they are waiting, when will the preacher finish? You know, in Indian culture, we have a revival meeting. For one and a half hours, you're preaching. The couple sitting in the front, they're thinking about something else. And they're saying, Lord, when will he finish? I know some of you are thinking that way. What is there to eat after this? Everybody does not come to church for worship. After being in ministry for 25 years, I have learned. Everybody comes with different agendas. But when you come into the presence of the Lord, all our agendas need to be laid down. It should not be about us. It should be about Him. It's not about our glory. It's about His glory. It's not our anointing. It is His anointing. It is not our power. It is His power. We need to understand. He's placing before us. Now the choice is yours what you want to pick. Some people want chicken sandwich. Some people want tuna sandwich. Some want cheese and ham. Some just want cheese. There are different gifts what the Lord lays before us. That's why the Bible says desire for the gifts. In this year of 2024, he wants to open up the doors that you can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God is not calling you to be limited. The choice is yours. I went to a Bible school to study. And the teacher said, me and my friend were there. And my teacher said, take whatever books you want from the library. My friend, very decent guy, went and picked up two, three books. I went around with two baskets, put everything in, and found the most expensive books and put it in the basket and looked at him. And he said, that's enough. But I kept on putting things into my bag because he said, take whatever you want. Some of us are like, oh, we try to be decent. Oh, God, I'm happy with this little one. No, I'm not happy, Lord. I need more. As soon as I said more, the Malayalis thought about chore and more. <laughs> See, God is requiring of you to be hungry. Blessed are they, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, and he will fill them. He will not leave you half empty. And Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. Not half full. How hungry are you for the things of God? In 2024, I pray hunger will rise up in you. I pray that for the things of God, you will say, Lord, I need more of this in my life. He's placing before you an open door. Imagine. How many of you can imagine? Okay, only three people. God help these all to imagine. Imagine there's a house in front of you and the keys have been placed in open and they have everything fancy in the house. For the young boys, they have Ferrari. What is that game? B game? What is that game? Is it B games? Xbox? Yeah. 
80 inch TV. Nice chair. Everything is there. For the women, you don't have to cook. Everything. God created something over there. Imagine all those things are there in that house and the owner of the house says, take what you want. Our Indian culture will kick in and we'll say, no, no, thank you. Venda, venda. See, I, I want you to get it. When God opens up the door, you don't have time to say no. You got to say, I'm all in. Let me clean this house up like a brand new house and leave it empty for them. There must be so much of hunger in you to see the power of the Lord in 2024 because before you, he's placing a door open. And this door, once he opens it, no man can shut. How many of you know there are some people who don't like you? Mm -hmm. They will do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. They will do witchcraft. They will do voodoo. They will do hex. Listen, listen. If they want to take your hair and fry it and do voodoo, I don't care. Because if God has opened up the door for you, nobody can shut it. God is opening those kind of doors. But we've got to be ready to walk in through the doors. You not stand outside in the porch and say oh it looks nice it looks fancy inside get in and take what God has for you if doors are open for you how many of you got children okay if you're not sure just look at your wife they'll remind you yeah because some husbands we sometimes forget we have memory lapse because we feel like Abraham some days how many of you know that Abraham in Genesis 22 he went and took his son for sacrifice and there are days we feel like with our children should I kill him Lord today yeah and there are other days you're like God he's so nice and cute oh Lord bless him thank you he's the greatest kid I have a kid has access into the house as a child of God, you have access to the things of God. It's you. Hang on. When I started my ministry, I used to make a statement. I used to say, little child. Okay, I think she may still run up to her dad, miracle. And dad picks her up. She may put her hand into the pocket. I don't know how many of you remember in the olden days your parents used to have pen and money and all in your pocket and they would pick up and the kid would put their hand inside and take it out your heavenly daddy has everything in his pocket all you've got to do is put your hand into his pocket when I said that statement many years ago somebody said I don't care, but I want you to know God has called you to be blessed. Amen. The God that I serve has not called you to be cursed. He's not called you to be bound. He's not called you to live under the feet. He's called you to the head and not the tail in your life. You may not like me. I don't care. I am liked by God. You know one of the good things about heaven? In 2024, you can go with that word. God doesn't have a committee. Is that a prophecy, Pastor? Yes. You know why God doesn't have a committee? Because in a committee, there will be one person who will not like you. Out of the seven. Yeah, that's why God said, I'm not having a committee. I am a decision maker by myself and I have decided to love you. You are Joseph to him. You are Esther to him. So let me say this to you. As a child of God, learn to walk boldly into the presence of God because the doors have been opened for you. There needs to be a boldness in you. Many people walk with their head down. Why? I am nobody. No, you are somebody. Many years ago when I was growing up kid, 
I heard this song and it touched me so much. Sung by the Romanian kids. Nobody loves me, I'm nobody's child in 1980s. No mommy kisses and no daddy smile. It broke my heart that time. And it was a song that I sung for a long time. But then I realized the love of Jesus. And I walked in. And I walked in. And became his child. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am the child of God. No, 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 no. You've got to say with an attitude. Somebody made a complaint about me. My dad was talking to me. My dad said to me, son, I heard that you say that I am your father. I said, yeah. I have not said it many times. Maybe two, three times I have said. I said, yeah. And he said, you are the only one in the family who says it. We have five children. You're the only one who has said it, that you're my son. I said, because I'm sure you are my father. That's why I have no problem in saying that you are my father. I said, the other four are not sure. If doors open through my father's name, I'm going to use it. There's a, another preacher here in England. His name is Blessing too. And he called me up and he said, Blessing, I want you to know, everybody thinks I am PG uncle's son, so everybody treats me very nice. I said, enjoy it till it lasts. After that, I'm going to come out in the open and say, that's a false one, this is a real one. You are not a false child of God. You are a true child of God. And for his children, he wants to open up the doors for you. Why does he want to open up the doors? Let me give you this word. Chapter 3, verse 8. No man can shut. Why? I know that you have what? Little strength. You have not much strength that means it's not about numbers when we have great numbers we have great strength but God says that two or three are gathered in my name yeah I am there in the midst of them now watch very carefully verse 8 it says you have little power, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Three things. You don't have much power, but you have kept the word and you have not denied my name. Two or three are gathered. I am there in the midst of them because of his name. So I want you to know it's not about numbers. It's about God's glory in your life. Many times we become so focused and we think it got to be a great crowd. Yeah, it's great. You know the great crowd sang Hosanna, Hosanna for Jesus. Three days later they sang crucify, crucify too. I always tell people I rather have few friends who are loyal and trustworthy than a large crowd who will despise me and deny me you need friends who will give you access or open the doors for you for doors to be a blessing and Jesus every time he opens a door that door is a door of blessing but he will shut certain doors even you need to know he will shut certain doors there are doors he says I will shut in Acts chapter 16, if you study very carefully, Paul wanted to go and preach in the province of Asia. And God said, no. He's trying to protect you. He's trying to keep you safe. So sometimes you may feel that no inside of you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He will keep you inside. He will hide you. What you do in the secret, 
I will reward you openly, the Bible says. So there is a time and a season to hide inside. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, what does it say? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. That means he's going to lock the doors. That you are safe inside. Devil will plan a lot of things to do. Devil will try to mess up your life. I want you to know, 2024 year is not going to be a normal year. There's going to be a lot of shakings taking place. Nations will be shaken. Economies will be shaken. But because we are in the tower, the righteous saints, we shall not be shaken. He will protect us and keep us safe. His hand will be upon us. Your children, listen to me. Your children will be saved. Your children will walk with the Lord. You will see the blessing of the Lord. You need to understand that God is shutting certain doors. So don't cry over people who will leave you. You got to learn how to wave them goodbye. Thank you for being so far with me. You are not part of my destiny further. How many of you think the tree cries when the fruit falls? You need to stop crying over people who have left you. And you need to start rejoicing. And saying, thank God they left me. Until Lot does not separate from your life. You cannot lift up your head and see the east, west, north and south. So rejoice. All those who left you in 2023. Oh, Pastor, you do not know. They caused me pain. They sent me this and that. Listen. Listen. God is taking you into something greater. These people cannot go on with you. These people will stop you from reaching your destiny. You need to know that you are in a prophetic place. Not a pathetic place, a prophetic place. The journey is great ahead. 2024 will be a year where this church will see signs and wonders of the Lord. Where the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. You shall see the power of the Lord flow in an unusual way. You will see God's glory being revealed in different areas of your life. Because you will take time in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord will start to move in an unusual way in your life, sir. It will not be a man's doing, it will be the doing of the Lord. So the Lord says to this church, uh, prepare yourself uh, because I am taking you into a greater journey. The next three years uh, are important years for your church. Uh, we are little. Jonathan and his armor bearer are having a talk. And the armor bearer says God can do with few and God can do with many. God can do with you what he wants to do with you. A young boy despised by his family, rejected by his brothers and his father, thrown in a pit, sold to slave owners, taken to Egypt, sold again, reaches the house, Accused of wrong things, uh, lands up in prison. Uh, but his purpose and his destiny was great. All by himself with God on his side. That's all you need, God on your side. That's all you need, God on your side. If you have God on your side, nothing can stop you. God will surely make a way where there seems to be no way. God has carried this church and the Lord wants you to know the Lord has carried you so far and he will keep on carrying you in the coming days. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 For a wide door of effective work has opened for me But there are many adversaries God will open up the doors But there will be many adversaries You know how many, you, how many of you know people get jealous when you get blessed? Anybody knows? Oh, you never have been, oh, only one person has been mistreated Oh, there's another one now when we start to get blessed, you buy a house, you get a car, you get something in your life. And immediately, huh? who does he think he is? Huh? Huh. They put their hand on the hip, make their backbone slip, and they say, oh, so, huh? But let me tell you, let them say so, let them say whatever they want. Huh? But the Lord has opened an effective door for my life. Huh? It's not a normal door, it's an effective door, the Bible says, sir. For effective work. That means wherever I put my hands on, it shall be blessed. Whatever I do, it shall be blessed. That means I will walk in the favor and the goodness of God. I want you to expect God's favor to fall upon you in 2024. That no man will be able to shut any doors over your life. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 and pray for us hang on because I have so many adversaries pray for us You need to pray for each other Listen, 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 please don't miss it Church of Philadelphia, Church of Love, he's talking pray for each other Oh pastor, I'm so busy. That's why my prayer. I don't have much time for prayer pastor I have seen many people pray Lord bless me my wife my two children before and no more Get a life, man. Come on. I want you to understand. God is taking you on a greater journey. The sacrifices that you make on your knees sir, in the presence of the Lord, God will open up the doors. Pray for us that God may open up the doors for our message. That we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Hang on, hang on. That means I am sold out. How many of you sing that song this morning we sang while taking communion in our church? All to Jesus I surrender. How many of you know it's easy to sing that song? How many of you will sing that song and mean that song? Let me see. If you are ready to do that, I'm going to take an offering right now. Take out your house keys, take out your car keys. No, not that one. One, one. one brother came to me when I was baptizing. He said to me, Pastor, I'm ready to be baptized except my right hand. And I thought, what does he mean? He said, there are certain things I only do with my right hand, Pastor. I beat up people with my right hand only. So please don't baptize that. All to Jesus I surrender, but certain things, I want to leave it aside. I am ready. To give everything to the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Are you wanting the Lord to open up the doors for you? Amen. This morning as I was praying. Psalm 118. He said son. This is the verse. I want you to start with. So in our church. Psalm 118 verse 19. Open the gates of of righteousness hang on open doors for the righteous open the gates once the gates are open I'm in when I worked in Singapore Airlines one of my friends came and said to me blessing I don't need my whole body coming just allow me to slip my leg in a little bit after that I'll squeeze myself in but if God can open up the door, you don't need to squeeze yourself in. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to do anything. God is himself opening up the doors for you. If you want doors to open, what is quoted in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, you can see in Isaiah 22, verse 22 too. 
Same thing over there. I have found what what does it say? And let's see in Isaiah 22. Verse 22. Same thing what we said in Revelation is what he's speaking over here. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. How many of you think David was broke? Anybody thinks David was broke? Man, he was a king. He was not called broke king. He was called blessed king. You need to understand it's the key to David's house. It's a key of David. Hang on, what is this key of David? Have you asked yourself that question? I asked myself and I found out a scripture in Acts, open up your Bible, chapter 13, verse 22. I have found, Acts 13, 22, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. What does it say after that? He will do. Come on. He will. Uh-huh. Everything. Not something. Everything. For who? For the Lord. For the Lord. He will do everything I want him to do. Now the question comes over here. What is the key of David? A willing heart. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 says, If you're willing and obedient. Huh. How many of you know there's a difference? Willingness. Okay, if you have kids who are teenagers, you tell them, stand up. They look at you. Sometimes the kids look at us like we are from other planet. Get up. Huh? Huh? Sometimes I feel this was India. We would do the whole ministry, the fivefold ministry. We do everything in the name of Jesus only. Okay? We do everything because then it's spiritual. Then it's spiritual. When you do in Jesus' name, it's spiritual. Huh? Stand up. I don't want to stand. Stand up. Then you give them the fivefold ministry. Once you give them one, they'll stand up. There was a girl like that. And she said to her mother, I am standing on the outside, but inside I'm still sitting. <laughs> if you're willing and obedient. I don't know how is it in your house when there's a leftover food we turn around and say oh no no they, they will eat it they'll eat it they don't want to eat they'll eat it that's fine it's fine they'll eat it really you want to eat mm -mm. willing mm -mm. but just obeying but the Bible says if you're willing and obedient that means they go hand in hand you will eat the best of the land God has called us to enjoy the best of the land in 2024 in the midst of all the shaking America will be shaken really bad America will be shaken really bad England we will see shaking we will see things moving around. And I'll tell you right now, worry will try to attack you. Some of you need to shut that door when worry comes. How many of you will open a door when the thief comes to your house? They said to me, oh, you can't beat a thief if they enter your house. You have to allow them to take what they want. Only in self-defense you can do it. I said, so, I'm Indian, I'm Indian. Please forgive me. Uh, I may have a British passport, but still in my heart of heart, I'm still Indian. So I said, so once he enters, I beat him up. Then if I go and hit my wall, head against the wall, I say self-defense. They said, no, it's not legal. 
Hang on. You will not open up your house for a thief. Why would you open up your door for worry and fear? Shut that door. God wants to shut it. God is trying to shut it and we are trying to pull it open. <laughs> we want to see what's going on outside. We want to see. In, hang on. Stop seeing. Just believe him. He's a good, good father. Amen. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. There was an old song that used to go like this. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole life I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. But how do we sing? I'll say maybe, maybe, maybe. I'll say, yeah, that's how we are. I still want to mm, check it out. You don't need to check it out. I'm checking. Does this boy fit for me? I'm checking. Does this go? You don't need to check anything out. It's produced. From heaven. And that's the best thing what God has for your life. Listen, God is going to open up the door for the righteous. But he wants to give that key even into your hands. The key of David. And for the people who will have that key, doors will always be open. What is that key of David? He was willing to do everything. I want you to see Psalm 132, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 132. O oh Lord, remember David and all the hardship he endured. Yeah, this is like many people who testify in church. Oh, my life. Uh, hang on. Stop testifying negative. Look what he says. He swore an oath to the Lord and made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes, no slumber to my eyelids. Till I find. Huh. Hang on, I need to find this door which is open for me. I need to find, there are many doors in this building. Every door may not be open. I know they have door where they have food that must be locked because some of you were coming today. No, I'm just joking. But there are doors, once everybody leaves, it's locked. That I may find, watch very carefully. A place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Mighty one of Jacob. Hang on, Jacob. Who's this Jacob? He was the one who was homeless. He's the one without a pillow. He's the one whose life was turned around. And he was called the blessed one, Israel. God will turn things around in your life in 2024. All your sorrows will turn into joy. The peace of God will enter your house. But you will say it is impossible task for me, oh pastor. It is difficult for me. Like God opened up the doors for Paul in the prison in Acts chapter 16. God is going to open up the doors for you in your life. Every situation that looks impossible, like in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, there was a woman called Elizabeth who was old woman and 
she was barren she did not have child but the Bible says uh, they were found right in the sight of God righteous people and God said hang on how can I not bless uh, the righteous uh, how can I not open up the womb of this righteous woman uh, and I want you to know this year God is going to open up your womb uh, God is going to open up the doors uh, for your life uh, to see the blessing and the goodness of God Everything that has challenged you, everything that said to you, you will not make it. <laughs> you should look on the face of the devil and say, ha ha ha, devil, I made it. Some of you thought 2023 you will be dead. You thought it will be over. Some of you thought you, this church will be shut down. Merry Christmas to the devil. The devil and his mother-in-law both are liars. He does not know we serve a mighty God. And through God, we shall do valiantly. Let me close with this because we are going to enter a time of worship. In the new year, we will enter with worship on our lips. The key of David, key of David, key, David, hang on, hang on. Who's this David? Who's this David? A young boy. Young boy, but a worshiper. The brothers are all muscle people. And God looked for a worshiper. The seven were, seven is a number of completion, but he was the eighth one, a new one. God is doing a new thing for the worshipers. God is creating something new for you. All you got to do is worship the Lord. All you got, have, let me say like this, worship has the power to turn things around. He's looking for worshipers. In the last days, uh, you will not worship on the mountain, but you shall worship in spirit and in truth. Truth is what? And truth shall bring you into freedom. So you will worship in freedom. Hang on. How many of you are free people in this house? Okay, only a few people. Huh? I pray you all will be free in the name of Jesus. Chains will be broken off your feet. There is a very famous song called Mary Mary. By Mary Mary. Called take the shackles of my feet. So I can dance. I want to praise him. See, when you become a Christian, you don't become chosen frozen Christian. So when we worship the Lord... Hang on, people tell me, oh pastor, you know, it is the culture of Africa, they dance. We, we Indians, we stand still and watch. Because the Bible says, be still and know I am God. You got to be crazy. David, he danced when the ark of the Lord was being bought. His wife despised him. Because of her despising his worship, her womb was shut off. Your worship has the power to open up your wounds, to open up the doors. Your worship has the power to turn things around in your life. So don't despise worship, but worship him in spirit and in truth and watch and see what does he do for you. He's going to do great and mighty things for your life. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward. How many of you know Paul and Silas came out of prison because of the worship? How many of you think they worshipped in their heart quietly? Anybody? I'm singing a song in my heart now. How many of you can hear it? You can't. See, when they started to sing, I don't know how good of a singer was Paul. He had a lot of problems and a lot of issues. Health-wise, it's not that great. But when he sang, all the other prisoners had to hear him sing. But because of his praise, hang on, he's praising the Lord. He's singing. When I think of his goodness, what he's done for me, I can dance. He's in prison. He's in chains. I can dance, dance, dance all night. I'm not sure. We were just beaten up. <laughs> they whipped us. He didn't sing a crying song. They sang a happy song. I am happy today. Yeah. 
They sang a happy song. Some of you only want to sing sad songs. It's like a broken record. Stop singing sad songs. Sing powerful songs that God is able to do great and mighty things. God will turn things around. What the enemy meant for evil. See, in the month of December, the one song we kept on singing in our church was what the enemy meant for evil. He will turn it around. He will turn it around. I want you to get it. Paul and Silas, their worship, opened up the prison doors. God is going to open up the doors for you in your worship in 2024 as you enter. But let me close with this scripture. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, we looked at Revelation chapter 3 verse 8. I have more scriptures to give you, but I'm not going over there. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. After this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me like a war trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must take place in the future. Come up here in 2024. I pray that you will come up in your prayer life. I pray that you will come up in your worship. I pray that you will come up in your word time. You will come up to see what God has for you. Pastor, how do you prophesy? How do you declare things what the Lord is saying? Let me tell you how. I go up. How many of you have sat in a plane and watched down? You can stand on the street and look forward. I don't know how far you can see, but if you go on a plane, you can see a bigger space. So God is saying, come up. He never tells you to come down. He never tells you to come down. So in 2024, are you ready to go up? Let's go up in our worship to the Lord. Come on, I want you to stand up on your feet and give him all the worship. Let it be a sacrifice of praise. Let it be a sacrifice of praise in your life. Hallelujah.
is a time to be joyful. Let us again dance. Happy New Year!